The Houston Texans had one of the brightest looking futures out of any team in the NFL, and within a couple years, they are once again a bottom feeder in the NFL. But today, I'm going to try to bring them back to greatness where they were a few years ago, and we're going to try to get them a ring. And before I get into the breakdown of the team here, I'm currently sitting at 85 subscribers and I'm trying to hit 100 very, very soon. So if you would drop a sub, that would mean a ton to me. And be sure to drop a like as well, because that's that lets me know you know you like the videos and it tells me you want to keep seeing them and also huge shout out to unknown for the suggestion their link will be in the description go drop them a sub and of course i will be subbing to them as well and if you want a shout out just like that comment down below what team i should do next and if i pick your comment which there is a pretty good chance i will i mean there aren't a whole ton of comments then i will give you a shout out so be sure to do all that i try to upload three videos a week Expect them Monday, Wednesday, and either Friday or Saturday. Follow my Instagram link in the description. I'm just going to plug everything, but I'll shut up now. Let's get into the team breakdown, and as always, thank you so much for watching. All right, hello everyone, it is Brandon the Simp here, and today we're going to try to rebuild the Houston Texans. Now, this is a rough team. Uh, so obviously their quarterback is Davis Mills, who was honestly probably the best rookie quarterback last, last year, other than maybe Mac Jones. I personally thought coming out that Davis Mills was an underrated prospect but I didn't think he would get a chance to start so early on in his career, but he did. And while I personally don't know if he'll be their quarterback of the future necessarily, he is a good, at least a bridge quarterback, while they try to build the rest of their team for maybe a quarterback with more upside, but I still do think Davis Mills is a good QB. This year they drafted Damian Pierce, who obviously I created here. I do like him a lot. He is a power back, obviously, which seems like a rare style of running back nowadays, but I do think he he is a very good running back. I think he'll be the starter this year, and I genuinely think he has maybe a shot at Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't know how much they're going to be running with the new regime and everything, but I could see him being a great player this year. Now with the receiving core, Brandon Cooks is a very underrated player. I do think when players get talked about as being underrated so much, I feel like it makes them a touch overrated, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying Brandon Cooks is overrated at all, but... He is pretty known for being an underrated receiver, and I do think he is really good. Obviously, Nico Collins kind of had a mini breakout last year. I expect him to have a big breakout this year. And John Mechie, I love him coming out of Alabama. I think they do have a great receiving core for the future, and I honestly don't see this changing much in the next few years. Brevin Jordan, I was a fan of coming out of college. Just kind of like a speedier tight end, which I do like personally. Not the best blocker in the world, but he is very young, and I do think he has a ton of potential. The offensive line here isn't terrible. I do like Kenyon Green a lot. I think he was a great pick in the first round. And honestly, this team has a lot of the core pieces. You have a good left tackle, you have a good wide receiver one, you have a quarterback with some upside, you have a running back that I think can do well. And overall, this team just has a ton of grit in general. Like these players that are here, they are here because they want to be here. Obviously, once Bill O'Brien left, the team was kind of left with nothing. And the players that wanted to leave, they left, like JJ Watt and just a lot of their older players that wanted to win a ring. But I wouldn't be shocked if this team won more games than you might expect. Looking at the defensive side of the ball here, Jonathan Grenard is a very underrated pass rusher, and I expect him to break out this year. Some players that I say I expect to break out, I'm a bit iffy on, but as long as he stays healthy, I think he will break out. Especially because they added Jerry Hughes, who I thought was a very underrated player for the Bills for a while. They also added Ogbo Akaronkwo, who I think is a very good pass rusher too. Not very good necessarily, but a very good depth piece is what I should say. And obviously adding Mario Addison too. They really loaded up on the edge group here. Also adding Rasheem Green from the Seahawks, who has shown big flashes coming from a Seahawks fan. They didn't add Jordan Jenkins, but he was a pretty good player for the Jets for like a year or two. Hasn't really recaptured that, but he has shown flashes. And then here they have like a million slot corners. I mean, you have Devin King, or 
Devin King, Desmond King, Tevier Thomas, who I think is very good, MJ Stewart, Eric Murray. Like, I don't know what to do with this group here. I think I'm gonna move Desmond King to strong safety, honestly. So yeah, you also have Steven Nelson, who has shown that he can be a solid starter. I believe with the Steelers, he was pretty good. So I expect him to be solid. Tevier Thomas was arguably the best nickel corner last year. He was a beast. He was very underrated. Not many people have been talking about him, but he was really good. Obviously drafting Derek Stingley out of LSU. Now, obviously there are not character concerns necessarily, but effort concerns. And I'm kind of worried about him in Houston if he'll want to buy into a team that isn't necessarily great. But the, the whole theme of this team is players buying in. So I don't know. I want to be optimistic and say he will work out. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll be optimistic. Obviously, I gave him superstar X Factor here. He has insane upside. Was one of the best college football players of all time as a freshman. Hasn't been the same since because of, obviously, that 2019 team losing pretty much their entire team. But if he can do that again, he will be an amazing player. Malik Collins is a pretty solid defensive tackle. I like him. Kevin Pierre-Lewis with the now Commanders was a very good linebacker. We'll see if he can recapture that. Blake Cashman, I really like coming out of college, has been injured a lot though, but if he can stay healthy and if he gets the opportunity, I think he can be solid. With Christian Kirksey and Camus Grugier Hill, I'm not the biggest fan, but they're whatever. Neville Hewitt, I do kind of like, honestly. MJ Stewart, when he played last year, was pretty damn good. That's why I have him all the way up at a 74. By the way, these are my custom rosters, which will be out on PC pretty soon. I'll let you know when they are. But yeah, MJ Stewart. I liked him coming out of college too. We'll just have to see how much opportunity he gets here if he makes a team. I don't know. So yeah, even though this team may look very rough, I think this is a team that has quite a bit of upside. I don't think all these players will hit this upside. I mean, obviously, that's kind of just how the NFL is. But there is a chance that at least most of them do and if they do this could be a okay team this year i don't think this even has a chance of being a playoff team this year but they do have a chance of being at least a decent team this year and i wouldn't be surprised if they were but that has been enough talking although there is a, a lot i want to say about this team like i didn't even mention jalen petrie i completely missed him very good safety coming out of baylor i like him a lot but again i'll shut up now let's get to the mid-season point of year number one and hopefully we are doing at least okay. All right, here at the mid-season point of year number one, we are three and four, actually. I'm kind of surprised we're even that good. I mean, I think this team can be decent in real life, but in Madden, it doesn't really look great. Here we do have a few upgrades, though. I'll just let the CPU do those. And in terms of re-signings, I really don't know who we're gonna have here. Okay, we do have a couple players I do want to bring back. We'll bring Desmond King back. He wants five years? I mean, I guess, but that's kind of a lot. He wants even more money in that? I don't know if I want to do that, I'm gonna be honest. And Malik Collins, I'll do it just so he can be a probably depth player eventually. But yeah, I don't really see myself bringing back any of these players here unless they play really well. So I will see you guys at the end of year number one. All right, here at the end of year number one, we do obviously miss the playoffs going five and 12. Now that's about what I expected. I didn't think we were gonna be three and four at the midseason mark. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that. Davis Mills though was not very good. 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns is okay, but 14 interceptions is kind of a lot up to a 71 overall but we'll we'll see we'll see about that Damian Pierce wasn't that good either. Less than 800 yards, eight touchdowns is fine, no fumbles. Normally in Madden, if one, either the quarterback or the running back, if one of them does well, the other one does bad. If the other, like if one of them typically does well, but it looks like neither of them were very good. Nico Collins, okay. 1,000 yards, five touchdowns, pretty good year up to a 75 overall. I don't know why I click on the player every time. I have a bad habit, apparently. John Mechie, though, 861 yards and eight touchdowns. Brandon Cooks with 800 yards and seven touchdowns. Brevin Jordan with 800 yards and four touchdowns. Looking at the line here, not good. Uh, Laramie Tunsil, even though he was our best lineman, let up the most sacks with 13. 
that's gross for what an 87 overall Titus Howard with 11 that's about what I would expect from him Justin Britt let up six which is a lot for a center and the guards were okay not great but solid in terms of defense we had a lot of tackles which is not a good thing it means our defense was on the field a lot 141 tackles from Kevin Pierre Lewis that is insane that probably led the league actually let me check it it tied for the league lead i guess that's fun blake cashman had 116 tevier thomas had 108 and steven nelson had 102. as a corner it's probably not a great thing to have a lot of tackles because a lot of the time it means you got beat we did however have a lot of tackles for loss and i see a pretty crazy stat coming up so malik collins had 15 tackles for loss jerry hughes with 14 jonathan grenard with 12 Rasheem Green with 10, and then a number of players had a decent amount. And then Jonathan Grenard with 14 sacks on the year. Oh my god. <laughs> I expect him to dev up. I thought he was going to be decent here. I didn't know he was going to be that good in the first year. Jerry Hughes even had 9 sacks. I honestly almost traded him away because he is old, but he was pretty good. Not that it really matters because we didn't make the playoffs anyways, but still. Not much pressure outside of those two though. Malik Collins with 3 sacks, Rasheem Green as a rotational pass rusher with 2, and a number of players with a small amount. And in terms of interceptions, Steven Nelson had five. Tevier Thomas and Derek Stingley each had three. I'm guessing our defensive stats were so inflated because we were on the field so much, but still, some of these players had great years. So for awards, Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. That's actually kind of a rare thing in Madden, surprisingly. Typically, it seems like it's kind of a weird player. Maybe like Kyler Murray has won some. I've seen Matthew Stafford win one. But Patrick Mahomes, that makes sense. For Offensive Player of the Year, it goes to Patrick Mahomes, no Texans. Kenny Pickett is in there, that's interesting. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Cleo Mack. I don't think there would be any... Oh no, Jonathan Grenard. How was he only at 10? He had 14 sacks, 12 tackles for loss. How was he only at 10? Xavier and Howard must have had a crazy year. It's hard to get in here as a corner. So he must have been really good. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kenny Pickett, so I'm glad it's an actual rookie. Davis Mills was in there at number 6, Damian Pierce at number 9. We had 6 and 9, nice. Defensive Rookie of the Year, almost said Player of the Year, I wish. It goes to JOK, so not an actual rookie, and then Odafe Owe, not an actual rookie. So Derek Stingley does come in at number 7 though, which is pretty good. So overall, not a good year obviously, but A, that was expected, and B, we had some players that performed pretty well, so I'm, even though the record was bad this year, we did pretty well. But let's get into the offseason, and we have some big decisions to make year one. So in the Super Bowl, the Dallas Cowboys destroy the Tennessee Titans 31-3. It seems like the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl a lot in these rebuilds, which, you know, they have a good team. But it seems like they just can never put it together enough to, you know, do well in the playoffs. Dez caught it or whatever, I don't know. But let's get into the re-signings here. I don't know who we're gonna have to re-sign, honestly. I mean, I guess Desmond King, but I don't even really know if I want him. So yeah, it's just Desmond King, and then that's really the only player I would maybe bring back. And I don't even think I'll bring him back. How did he do this year? So one interception, one tackle for loss, only three deflections on three with 36 catches allowed no thank you i am good on that trust me okay at this point i typically do cut players to you know save capperman and everything but there aren't really many players i'm gonna cut i'm just gonna cut justin mccray because it, it'll save us a couple million he's a pretty bad old lineman so i really don't need him but let's check out some free agents here I really don't know what I even want here. I don't know what the goal is with this free agency class, but I just want something, man. We need, we need something. I would go Jacoby Myers, but receiver is honestly our strong suit right now, I guess. I don't know if you would call it that, but we probably don't need one. Also, why is Russell Okung still in the game? He hasn't been in the league in like four years. I don't know, dude. This game confuses me sometimes. So there really aren't any linemen that I'm interested in, unfortunately, because we really do need some linemen on this team. Also, Jonathan Grenard didn't get Superstar. I'm deving him up to Superstar. I do not care at all. Sue me. All right, the only contract I'm going to offer is to Ronnie Harrison. I'm offering a four-year, $34 million contract, which I think is what Kevin or Desmond King 
Desmond King, is that his name? Why do I keep saying the wrong name? Yes, it's Desmond King, I don't know why I can't remember that, but it's the same contract Desmond King wanted, so it's kind of rude, but Desmond King played bad and rejected us, so fuck him. We'll see if Ronnie Harrison will sign, I hope so, because we need a safety, we need anything we can get, but we'll see if he signs, and then I will see you guys for the 2023 NFL Draft. Okay, perfect, he does accept. Alright, so here in the 2023 NFL Draft, we have the number three overall pick. The Jets actually have the number one pick. It seems like there's a new team in every draft, so that's kind of cool. But with this pick, I kind of don't know what I'm going to do at all. I think the main thing I'm going to look for is maybe either offensive line, maybe a QB if there's a good one, Probably a linebacker, D lineman. We pretty much need everything. I mean, nothing's really off the table as long as the player's good enough. So let me look around and hopefully there's some good players here. All right, so for some reason, the CPU thought the position we need the most is receiver, even though that is arguably our best position. So we have them 100% scouted. I did, however, see a third to fourth round talent guy in the undrafted section, so maybe we'll take him later, I don't know. But I think the best lineman here is Alex Taylor. He is 6'7", 336 pounds, only 21 years old out of Texas A&M. He ran a 4'8'7 at the combine and put up 34 reps on the bench, so he's fast and strong. B awareness, B run block, B finesse, or pass block finesse. Only D lead block, but honestly, the linemen in this class kinda blow. So we're gonna go Alex Taylor. Let's see if he is good. He has hidden dev, let's go. Now unfortunately, like I always say, you can't see the overall for some stupid reason, even though you can literally see it, you know, 10 minutes later whenever you finish the draft, however long it takes you. So I have no idea what the point of that is. So yeah, that was a pretty good pick. Let's get into the second round. The player picked right before us is named Dante Cheeks, which I think is pretty funny, but not get it, but like Cheeks, that wasn't intentional, but you know. We are gonna take Sam Hawkins, I think. He's 6'2", 232, only 22 years old. That's a lot of twos out of Miami. He ran a 4.47 at the Combine, which is pretty good. Number one for linebackers, or at least middle linebackers. And we really don't know a whole lot about him. But again, we just kind of need a linebacker and he's the best looking one, taking his speed into consideration. So he has C block, shed C man, B play rec and a aware or not a awareness a power moves, which is really weird. I mean, it's just an A relative to every other middle linebackers power moves but still it's interesting so let's take him he does have hidden and he has 91 speed at middle linebacker that is insane only 87 acceleration though so maybe a stiff player but once he gets up to his top speed he's fast yeah he only has 75 change direction i don't know that's interesting he looks like a very good player and he'll probably be our number one linebacker for the future all right here even though we don't need a receiver i'm gonna take eric yates he is a first round talent so he's guaranteed to at least be a good player whether he has a dev trait or not, we'll have to see which, you know, personally, I would bet that he doesn't, but he looks like a good player nonetheless. He is a slot archetype, which is interesting. He's 6'1", only 21 years old out of Clemson. He has A catch in traffic, A catch. He ran a 4'4'9 at the combine, only nine reps on the bench. Let's go. He has B awareness, B short route. He's a good kick returner, which is interesting. Not a possession receiver at all with F spec catch. Or no, I guess he has A catch in traffic. So good hands, but won't make crazy catches i don't know interesting but let's take him eric yates he does have normal like i expected he had a better combine or a better 40 time than or no i guess not but he does look like a very good player not super strong obviously the nine reps were elite but he does look like a very fast receiver so he'll be like a good fourth receiver i guess behind brandon cooks nico collins and john mechie but he'll be a good fourth receiver all right, and I think this is going to be the last pick I take in this draft. It's going to be Cameron Alexander. He is 6'2", 300 pounds, only 21 years old out of Texas A&M. Looks like a very good center. Ran a 4.91 at the combine, 4.85 at his pro day. So he's a very quick center and a very strong center. 
putting up 36 reps on the bench. He has B awareness, A impact block, A pass block finesse, A pass block power. He definitely looks like a pass protecting center with only C run block, so let's take him. Pass protection is more important anyways, and he has normal dev. Now that doesn't make any goddamn sense, brother. Um, I don't know how 73 speed, 89 strength, only 21 years old doesn't scream high upside, but you know, apparently Madden doesn't think so. With 86 acceleration as a center. Yeah, that screams a ton of upside to me, but apparently not to Madden with only normal dev. Let's go. But hey, he looks like a good center nonetheless, so I think that was a good pick. But I'm going to sim out the, the rest of the draft here. Apparently, we only have a seventh round pick left, so it's interesting. But I will see you guys with the draft recap. All right, here is a recap of the draft, and honestly, I'm kind of disappointed. The highest player we got was a 73 overall in Eric Yates, and of course, he does have normal development, but he still does look like a good player with 90 speed, 93 excel, 84 catch, 85 catch in traffic, so I can't be too disappointed. Sam Hawkins, only a 71 overall, but 91 speed, 87 excel, 82 pursuit. 80 tackle, 81 hit power, looks like a pretty good player. Alex Taylor is only a 71 overall. I thought he would be a bit higher. He has 90 strength, 75 run block power, so he's a good run blocker. And then we drafted a good pass blocker in Cameron Alexander, who is a 72 overall with 89 strength. 77 pass block. I guess he's not the worst run blocker in the world, but he's not great. Mo definitely more of a pass protector. And the CPU drafted Ben Duhon. I I've never seen that last name before, but 93 speed, 93 excel, 77 spec catch. Looks like a well-rounded receiver. No, not really. It looks like more of a deep threat, actually, but doesn't even have great deep route running, just fast, I guess. I don't know. He's an interesting player, I'll say that. So overall, I'm kind of disappointed pointed with the draft, but it wasn't terrible. So let's get into year number two of the rebuild. All right, here at the start of year number two, we are up to a 76 overall. I think the main goal for this year is just going to be developing our younger players because I don't really think we have a shot at the playoffs this year. Like 76 overall is an upgrade, but it's not, it's not good enough to be, you know, a playoff team. But let's just take a quick rundown of how things are going. So most of the team is pretty much the same. We did add the center Cameron Alexander, obviously, so he'll be our new starter. We added Alex Taylor. I believe he was the number three overall pick in the draft. I'll move him over to right tackle because that's where he will play, obviously. Okay, well, it put him back at left tackle. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. I love this game. Davis Mills, unfortunately, did have a bit of a disappointing rookie season, but you never know. He still could break out this year, and it's trying to play Taylor at tight end. Dude, I don't know. This game is weird. <laughs> but looking at the defensive side of the ball, it's kind of the same deal, just a lot of developing. Derek Stingley is up to an 80 overall at only 21 years old, which is very nice. We did add Ronnie Harrison in the, I almost said in the draft, but in free agency. And he is a 78 overall at only 25 years old, so I do like that. Jonathan Grenard, I do want to give Superstar Dev, obviously, because he was a monster last year, and he deserves it. Okay, there we go with that. And the linebackers are relatively just the same. We did add Sam Hawkins in the draft, obviously. Athletic Freak, I mean, 91 speed, 74 strength is very good for a linebacker. Well, the strength isn't amazing, but 91 speed is great. So yeah, basically, we're just in a better spot than we were last year overall. So there isn't really a lot else to do here other than sim to the midseason point, and hopefully we are doing pretty well. All right, here at the midseason point of year number two, we are only two and five. I thought we would be a little better than that, probably similar to last year, but unfortunately, that is not the case. And I think I am going to actually do at least an offensive playbook change because Davis Mills is playing terribly. 10 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, not great. Looking at the running game, also Damian Pierce is not doing very well, only 3.8 yards per carry. The receiving is okay, I mean it's fine. We're on track to have maybe one 1,000 yard receiver, but I'm not even sure if we'll get that. Blocking is solid from everyone other than Kenyon Green, weirdly enough. In terms of defense, we're not getting very much pressure, tackles for loss are okay picks are bad so so yeah i definitely think a playbook change is necessary but in terms of re-signings let's see who we have here Ooh, okay so brandon cooks i definitely do want back four years 57 mil that's 
pretty good and he doesn't like it of course. Tevier Thomas, I'll bring him back. He hasn't really developed a whole lot here, but he's at least good and we do bring him back. Other than that though, I guess I'll bring Blake Cashman back because he has a good dev trait that I gave him. I did sign Matt Gay in free agency because I mean he's a good kicker and he has the funny name. So yeah, I don't really think I'm going to re-sign many other players. I'm just going to try to re-sign Brandon Cooks and maybe Matt Gay later on, but I will change the playbooks and then I will see you guys at the end of year number two. All right, here at the end of year number two, we do end up finishing four in 13. That is one of the worst records I've had in one of my rebuilds before. I don't know why this has like mid-season records right here. I don't know. This game is weird, but let's check the season stats. Davis Mills ended up with 4,300 yards, 26 touchdowns, 19 interceptions. I think I am going to look for a new QB because Davis Mills has not been good at all. Same with our running back, Damian Pierce. Sure, he had 1,600 yards, or not 1,600 yards, I wish. 16 touchdowns, but he only had 700 yards in 3.7 yards per carry. What is his overall? He's up to a 78. I think he would be a good pure power back to have, like just a good goal line back, but I do want a better every down running back. Brandon Cooks ended up with 1,100 yards and five touchdowns. Nico Collins had a 1,000 yards, but only three touchdowns. Eric Yates actually played, which I didn't really want that, but he had 900 yards and seven touchdowns. Brevin Jordan had 700 yards and seven touchdowns. John Mechie, because he didn't play much only had 100 yards and a touchdown unfortunate <laughs> okay the blocking was awful so at the midseason point Kenyon Green led the team in sacks with four but the tackles didn't want to let that slide apparently Alex Taylor ended up with 15 sacks as a right tackle that is awful and Laramie Tunsil ended up with 12 at an 88 overall. That is also terrible. Cameron Alexander was very good as a rookie though, only letting up three sacks, so that's pretty cool. But I might look for a new right tackle this off season, I don't know. In terms of tackles, Sam Hawkins led the team with 128, Derek Stingley had 100, Tackles for loss, Jonathan Grenard was a beast with 18. Jerry Hughes had 13, Malik Collins with 12, Rasheem Green with 11. Great numbers there. In terms of sacks, not so much. Nine and a half for Jonathan Grenard, which is still good, but is a step down from last year, obviously. Jerry Hughes had six, and Malik Collins had four and a half, and that was pretty much it. In terms of interceptions, Derek Stingley led the team with three, Sam Hawkins and Steven Nelson each had two, and then a few players each had one. So, hmm, I'm not even going to check yearly awards. I don't care. We're not going to have any. I'm just going to go into the offseason. We're going to kind of forget this season happened. I think that's best. Let's see if we can make any upgrades in free agency. God, I sure hope so. Okay, so in the Super Bowl, the Kansas City Chiefs take down the Green Bay Packers. And it looks like we might have actually won an award, so maybe I should have checked. Oh, we won Offensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, <laughs> maybe it would have been pretty good to check that. We'll just, uh, we'll use Sam Hawkins because I wanted to go into Field General, but yeah, it might have been pretty good to check that. So I'll go over and see that now. Actually, I'll go to the re-signing period first. Okay, Patrick Mahomes won MVP against again. Very interesting. No Texans up there, unfortunately. Kenny Pickett was up there. Interesting. Offensive player of the year, somehow Lamar Jackson beats Patrick Mahomes, even though Mahomes was MVP. I don't know, dude. Defensive player of the year goes to Miles Garrett. No Texans, unfortunately. And yeah, Eric Yates won Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's great. There were a lot of Titans up there, but no other Texans. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Sam Hawkins, of course. No other Texans, unfortunately. But yeah, at least that's one good thing to come of this year. But let's check uh, re-signings. I really don't think I'm going to bring anyone else back at all other than Matt Gay, of course. We'll just sign him for like four years. Hopefully he takes that cool. He does. And I guess I'll just re-sign some of the younger players here just to be depth pieces, pretty much. All right, cool. And with all that, let's finally get into free agency. All right, and of course, it's obviously doing the stupid ass glitch where you can't sign anyone for some reason you can't even click on anyone if you ever have that problem just back all the way out of franchise mode out of the whole franchise thing and just go to the actual Madden home screen and then just go back in and it should theoretically fix it this game has so many bugs I don't know how the NFL actually allows EA to make their game still 
but we do actually have a few good players sitting here. I think we're gonna go all out here. Give me a second to sign some players. All right, so when I said I was going all out in free agency, I was clearly not kidding. So I know I've gotten him in a rebuild before, but we're gonna pick up Aaron Rodgers. I was thinking about going Baker Mayfield just to be a little different because obviously, like I said, we've gotten Aaron Rodgers before, but I I didn't want to. I wanted to actually have a chance to be good with this team, so we're going Aaron Rodgers. There's no chance he would actually sign with this team, but it's Madden, and realism doesn't exist here, so seems pretty fun to me. And another player we do get a lot, definitely a lot more than Aaron Rodgers, is Kareem Hunt, but he's always so good in Madden. And I think he's a pretty underrated player in real life, so we'll bring in Kareem Hunt. I just left Jack Conklin here, even though we're not gonna get him to show that I at least tried to get a better right tackle. But unfortunately, the Baltimore Ravens very, very much want him, so we're gonna unfortunately back out of him. We're gonna try to bring in Mecole Hardman. We don't have the lead by a lot, but it would be nice to have a superstar receiver that is a good overall, so we'll try to bring him in. We're gonna try to bring in Cole Holcomb. He is very expensive for how good he is. We're offering him a three-year, $37 million contract, having to beat out the Jets and the Lions. That's not an elite offer group for him, the Texans, Jets, and Lions, but you know, hopefully we can beat out the two other dumpster fire organizations. We're gonna bring in an Antonio Gandy Golden to be our backup tight end, which fun fact, he is actually listed as a tight end now on the football team's depth chart, or no, they're the commanders now. You know what I mean. So that's pretty interesting. And we're gonna bring in AJ Can. We're gonna bring him back because he has played pretty well for us. I will likely draft a new guard to play over him, but you know, it's at least, ha it, it's nice to have an insurance policy there just in case, bringing in a player who has shown that he can play pretty well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with some of the players that were there. So we'll see who out of those players can sign with us. And then I will see you guys for the 2024 NFL draft. Okay, so this is very interesting. We got every single player except Mecole Hardman, but I am very much okay with that. We didn't really need him. I mean, we already had a pretty deep receiving core. That was one of the last players I offered, just because why not, but I'm fine with not getting him. We already have good young players there, so I am perfectly okay with that, but everything else on this team is looking great. Obviously with the additions of Aaron Rodgers, Kareem Hunt, bringing back AJ Can, bringing in Cole Holcomb. I saw this in free agency, Blake Cashman actually went up to Superstar Dev, which is very very cool. And I'm gonna give Eric Yates star dev because you know he won Offensive Rookie of the Year and he deserves it. But yeah, overall I'm very happy with that free agency class and I may not be done yet. I am going to try to bring in Greg Gaines and Jerry Tillery. I'm trying to sure up our interior because we still have a 70 overall starter there in Ross Blacklock. I mean I think I've been giving Roy Lopez more snaps than him, but either way, they're both a 70 overall. Malik Collins has been solid, but I would like a little bit better of a player just to make it look not so empty there. So we're bringing in Greg Gaines and hopefully Jerry Tillery. I think Greg Gaines will sign with us. I'm not super sure about Jerry Tillery, but I don't really care if we get him, to be honest. It would just be kind of like a good third defensive tackles, so we'll see if we can bring those two in. And now, finally, I think we're done in free agency. Okay, so like I expected, Jerry Tillery does reject, but we do bring in Greg Gaines, so that's pretty cool. I just noticed the Jaguars went 12-5. and five. That's really interesting. And now I will see you guys for the 2024 NFL Draft. All right, the New York Jets are down terribly, apparently. They have the number one overall pick again, and we actually have the number two overall pick. But I'm gonna to do something interesting real quick. Here we are trading Davis Mills, linebacker Garrett Wallow, and a seventh round pick next year for the first round pick of the Indianapolis Colts. For some reason, they're really interested in Garrett Wallow. I think it's because outside linebackers just in general are all treated like edge rushers. I don't really know why that is because obviously that's not the case and it doesn't really make any sense. And Garrett Wallow isn't really a good player at all anyways. So I don't know why they wanted him so much, but I will take that. It was close to going through anyways with just Davis Mills. We had to add a little bit more, but I'm very happy getting 
the first round pick from the Indianapolis Colts. All right, here with the number two pick in the draft, I'm kind of between two players. We have Emmett Merle. He put up 33 reps on the bench at the combine, but 37 at his pro day, which is a pretty big difference. He has B awareness, A impact block, A lead block, B pass block, B pass block power. He looks very good. And then we also have Bryce Drummond. Drummond? I don't know how you say that name, but I've seen it a lot. He is only 21 years old, so a year younger. The other guy was 22. He put up 34 reps on the bench only 33 at his pro day, so less at the pro day, more at the combine. I trust the combine a little more. He has A awareness, which if you didn't know, I think is probably the most important stat, just in general, when drafting players. It's a pretty big indicator of if a player is good or not, at least from what I have seen. He has A impact, or no, not A impact block, B impact block, A lead block, B pass block finesse, C run block power. So the other guy, at least overall stats wise, looked better, but this guy's a year younger and I like the A awareness. I'm gonna go Bryce Drummond. He does have hidden depth. He has 86 strength, 85 excel. He's not a really fast lineman at all, but he is super young. I'm going to be moving the other right tackle we had inside to guard because he's like 340 pounds or something. He is 6'7", so that'll be really tall for a guard, but I don't really care. Let's sim to our next pick, and I don't really know what I'm going to do here. I guess I'll find out. Okay, so this is a very good defensive tackle class. Will Mobley is an athletic freak. He ran a 4.75 at the combine, put up 38 reps on the bench at 305 pounds. He has Bs all across the board for the stats we know, but I don't think he's the player I'm gonna go with. I think we are going to go Aaron Gallery. He's 6'6", 306, only 22 years old out of Virginia, ran a 4.91 at the combine, which is still pretty good for defensive tackles. And just take a look at his jumping, uh, combine stats. His three cone was good, his 20 yard shuttle was good, his bench press was great, and he has A awareness, A tackle, B block shed, A stamina and injury, which don't really matter for us, but you know, they're there. So we're gonna take him and he has hidden dev. 85 acceleration, 75 speed, and 91 strength at defensive tackle is crazy. That's like almost some Aaron Donald level stuff that is insane. So I think that was a very good pick, and I think we might have just found a pretty big steal. All right, there goes Will Mobley to the Jets. If I remember, I am going to check his overall, actually. All right, here in the second round, I think this is the last pick I am actually going to take before we sim out the rest of the draft. We are going to take Nick Henson. He looks like a very good player. So he ran a 4-3-7 at the combine and put up 20 reps on the bench, so he is fast and strong. Had a good Good vertical jump with 38.1 inches that is very good his broad jump at his pro day was first for cornerbacks but his broad jump at the combine was only 15th so that's a little weird but i don't really know what to think about that he has b man coverage b tackles so he's good in run defense he looks like probably a press man corner if i had to guess because you know he's pretty strong although i don't know because he's only 183 pounds. I have no idea what to make of this dude. Let's just take him. So he does have hidden, of course. I am a draft god. He has 94 speed, 69 strength. Nice. So he's not the most agile corner with only 87 agility, but he is very fast. If I had to guess, I would guess this cornerback is like 210 pounds or something, but he's only 183, which is really weird. And the A hit power, which I just kind of glossed over, is really interesting. So we'll see what he looks like after this. The draft but speaking of that i'm gonna sim out the rest of the draft and hopefully it picks us a few good players like i said earlier i am a draft god now surprisingly th this time when i opened it it didn't crash my game because it seems like every single time i open the draft recap my game decides to crash for some reason but bryce i'm gonna say dramond dramond that sounds right i don't know i actually like him a little more than i thought i did at first because he is from washington state let's go but he's only a 71 overall unfortunately i thought he would be a bit better than that but he still looks like a pretty good player aaron Gow Gallery, though, he is a 75 overall. That's about exactly what I expected. He has 79 power moves, 81 tackle, 91 strength, 85 excel, 75 speed. 
Very, very good player. Nick Henson is better than I thought he would be. I thought he would be around a 72, 73 overall, but he's a 75. He has 94 speed, 77 man, only 72 press, so not really a press corner like I thought. I guess he's just a good man physical corner. He has 74 hit power, so that's pretty cool. I guess he's almost like a slot corner. Yeah, that's probably what he, he is. He's probably like a safety slash nickel corner. I guess that makes more sense than what I was thinking. And I did actually take a few picks right here. I took Demarcus Hurd, hopefully not related to Amber, but he actually looks like a pretty good player. And we actually have a our edge rusher. Our edge rushers on the team are listed, not listed, but they are, I guess, power rushers. If that makes any sense, that's a terrible way of saying what I'm trying to say. Basically, our edge rushers, the scheme favors power rushers, so he will fit that better than the, like, a million speed rushers we have. I don't know why I'm having a hard time speaking right now. I'm just fucking stupid. And we took two receivers here. We took Clyde Brown because he was a projected second to third round talent. He's a very speedy deep threat, so that's pretty cool. And it, we took Eddie, Fen Eddie Fender, interesting name. Very similar player, another deep threat, second to third round talent basically took the same player other than one uh major key detail uh <clears throat> cpu drafted Derek burley who looks pretty bad and then it also took cj andrews like our fifth receiver who is also very similar to those two okay well overall that was a very good draft so let's sim the week and we will go over the team for the start of the third and final year of our rebuild. All right, here is a look at the team going into year number three of the rebuild. I don't know how we're only a 78 overall because this team honestly looks very good. It's not too different from our team last year other than two major differences with Kareem Hunt and Aaron Rodgers now coming in. We also slid Alex Taylor, I think that was his name, right? Yeah, Alex Taylor into right guard. And now we have Bryce Drummond at right tackle. I still don't know how to say that, but I think that's how you say it. Also, something interesting I didn't notice, or I didn't really not notice, but I didn't think of, is that Charlie Heck is the son of former NFL first round pick Andy Heck. I guess that makes a lot of sense, and I should have realized that, but for some reason it just didn't click with me, but that's pretty interesting. But overall, this team is developing pretty well. Kenyon Green is playing up to an 81 overall with uh, with morale. Brevin Jordan's up to a 77. Nico Collins is up to a 79. And then looking at the defense here, we obviously brought in Cole Holcomb. Blake Cashman is up to superstar dev. We drafted Aaron Gallery, I think his name is. I'm getting better at remembering drafted players' names. Derek Stingley is up to an 86 overall with morale. We're gonna start Nick Henson as our slot corner. Er, actually, I'm gonna play him as the number two. Or no, I guess Tevier Thomas is only a 79 in the slot, even though that's what he is in real life. So we'll, we'll stick with Nick Henson in the slot and we'll maybe rotate him in as our number two. I don't know what it'll do. But yeah, I'm very excited to see how this team does this year. Also, the CPU drafted Derek Burley, who I thought was bad, but he actually has a dev trait, so that's pretty cool. But we'll see how we do this year, and I will see you guys at the mid-season point of the third and final year of the rebuild. Okay, so at the mid-season point of year number two, we are, or year num okay, so at the mid-season point of year number three, we are six and one. All right, I accidentally clicked on schedule, like always, because I'm a dumbass, but I guess I'll take that opportunity to show you that I didn't obviously force any of these wins. I think with the next video, I'm just going to stop doing this, stop showing it, because like there's no real point. <laughs> but yeah, obviously no forcing wins because that's some stupid shit. I don't think anyone does that, but still. We do have a few upgrades here. Aaron Gallery is up to a 77 overall now, so that's really cool. He does only have star dev, unfortunately, but he's still a very good player. I honestly kind of thought he would have like X Factor or something, but hey, I can't complain too much. And finally, what I actually meant to do is let's check how the players are performing. So Aaron Rodgers is probably on track to an MVP with 2,200 yards, 20 touchdowns, only five interceptions, and a 70% completion percentage. That is insane. For rushing, Kareem Hunt, like always, is a monster, 500 yards and five touchdowns. Brandon Cooks is doing great, Nico Collins is doing great, Brevin Jordan is doing amazing, Eric Yates is doing well, even our backup tight end is doing well. Laramie Tunsil is the only bad lineman on our, in our team so far, or on our team, you know what I mean. 
and one player has zero sacks so far. That is Kenyon Green, wow, that's pretty cool. Looking at the defensive side of the ball, we're not getting much pressure at all. Jonathan Grenard is having his worst year by a lot so far, but Ogbo Akaronkwo is doing very well with four and a half sacks so far. Not very well, but pretty well. And Aaron Gallery actually has three, so I'm very impressed so far with how the team is doing. I forgot to check interceptions, but we're at the midseason point anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But let's sim to the end of the year. We have some re-signings. I don't know if I really care about those because obviously it's only a three-year rebuild. But oh boy, we have some uh, big name players here. I'm glad we don't have to worry about these. <laughs> All right, they both rejected us, so I'm very glad we don't have to worry about these. But let's sim to the end of the year and hopefully we can have a pretty good season this year. All right, I kind of thought we were gonna collapse, but we ended up going 12 and five. Now that's obviously not quite as good as we started, but it's about as good as you can ask for when you're only an 80 overall. So this was a very successful season, and here we are gonna be taking on the Cleveland Browns in the wild card. but let's get into the season stats and awards. Aaron Rodgers was very, very good. With 5,400 yards, 47 touchdowns, 13 interceptions is a little high, but I will definitely not complain. And a 69% completion percentage, nice. In terms of rushing, Kareem Hunt had 1,100 yards, 4.5 yards per carry, and 13 touchdowns. In terms of receiving, we had four 1,000 yard receivers. Brandon Cooks with 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns. Nico Collins with 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. Eric Yates with 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. What is his overall now? He's up to a 78, 79 with morale cool. And Brevin Jordan with 1,000 yards as a tight end and seven touchdowns. That is insane. In terms of blocking, pretty good. Laramie Tunsil and Bryce Drummond each had 10 sacks or let up 10 sacks. I guess Drummond was our worst. Linemen overall, because typically left tackles let up more sacks than right tackles. And the interior was good. Cameron Alexander wasn't great, but Alex Taylor was our best lineman overall. He did pretty damn well. And I think moving him into guard was a very good choice. Sam Hawkins led the team in tackles with 133. Cole Holcomb was in second with 109. In terms of tackles for loss, goddamn. 17 from Jonathan Grenard, 16 from Greg Gaines, 15 from Aaron Gallery as a rookie, 10 from Ogbo Akaronkwo and 9 from Cole Holcomb. In terms of sacks though, 10 and a half from Jonathan Grenard is still pretty good. Definitely won't complain about that. 7 from Ogbo Akaronkwo, 6 and a half from Greg Gaines, 6 from Aaron Gallery, very cool. Derek Stingley led the team in interceptions, or I guess he tied with Sam Hawkins, each having three. Tevier Thomas had two, Nick Henson had two, and then a couple players each had one. So very, very, very good year. Best offense in the NFL in terms of yards and, ooh, 25th defense. So we had a pretty terrible defense, but a good offense, the best offense. And Aaron Rodgers with the Houston Texans wins another MVP. That is insane. Uh, no other Texans up here. Not really surprising. Teddy Bridgewater on the Bucks was in there. That's weird. Aaron Rodgers obviously wins Offensive Player of the Year. No other Texans. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Vaughn Miller at probably like 35, 36 years old here. Interesting. Uh, no Texans though. Interesting. Terrell Edmonds in there. That's weird. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Joey Andrews of the Broncos. I realized I forgot to check the defensive tackle that I was supposed to check after the draft, but we'll see if he was up here. He went to the Jets. And yeah, no Texans in here. And Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Aaron Gallery. So we made the right choice either way. Nick Henson came in at number three. And Will Mobley, yeah, came in at number 10. So I think we made the best choice. There was a 63 overall in here. That's interesting. So obviously we had an amazing year. We have some upgrades here apparently. Let's see what this is. I don't know if there's going to be any. No, it's not anything major, just a depth corner. So honestly, I do not really expect to win this playoff game. Now, I don't normally go into playoff games like some rebuilder people do because 
my computer, even though it was like 1600 bucks, it's kind of a brick. To be honest, it doesn't really run very well when I do that. So we're just gonna sim it out. We're, we're gonna hope and pray that we can beat the Browns here. You know, we should, because they're kind of a, pro a poverty franchise. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because we're probably gonna lose now, but let's sim it out. And we actually do get the win here, 36 to 21. So very happy with that performance from our team. We do have some upgrades here. Anything important? Nick Henson actually gets an upgrade. Going up to hopefully a 79 overall. Well, 79 with morale, we'll take that. But quick tip for anyone, always do slot upgrades if you want man coverage, because a lot of the time it brings your man up two overall. Sometimes only one, but a lot of the time it brings it up two. But here we are taking on the Cincinnati Bengals at an 87 overall to our 80. So again, we probably shouldn't be winning this, but we'll see what happens. Let's sim it out. Hopefully we are in the conference championship, but I honestly won't be disappointed if we're not, and unfortunately we are not. But bringing this team into the playoffs is enough of, enough of an accomplishment itself. But before we take one final look at the team, if you have not already, be sure to drop a like, a sub, turn on notifications for my channel, and let me know what team to rebuild next, and if I pick your comment, obviously I will give you a shout out. I'll drop you a sub, tell people to sub to you, all that stuff I said in the intro. But let's take one final look at the team before we wrap it up here. So the offense, it seems like it should be a higher overall than it is. We're only at an 80 overall offense and just an 80 overall in general. But this, te this team obviously played very, very well. Bringing in Aaron Rodgers and Kareem Hunt was an amazing decision because we probably would have been bad if we didn't. Brandon Cooks is still doing very well. Nico Collins developed a lot. This Eric Yates guy was good. John Mechie, when he played, was good. Brevin Jordan developed a lot. The offensive line, we fixed that a ton. The defense here, Derek Burley actually has Superstar, which is really weird, but okay. A lot of the players here, just in general, played a lot better than their overall indicated. Obviously, Derek Stingley developed a lot. Jonathan Grenard had like 30 sacks total in three years with us, which is really nice. Probably even closer to 35. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy with how this rebuild went. But again, if you enjoyed, let me know by hitting that like button, dropping a sub, turn on notifications, everything I've said. Drop a comment down below because that helps the video out as well. But that is all for this rebuild. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.